Hey guys, Mike here. So this is a jam-packed video, so I'm not even gonna like get into everything we're gonna cover because it's a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, I'm gonna start off obviously very another volatile day, shocker there. And you know, I would just want to start off with this because some guy posted it. I saw this originally when he bought the Tesla call yesterday, betting on earnings, and the market value was fifty thousand four hundred right there. And then he did update the day and it's worth nine thousand. So I mean you know, those, those big bars I tell you about, I, I would never put that much into options, especially, but you know, if it would have paid off, I've seen the big ones pay off before and it's crazy, um, you know, how much, but of course the, the market makers, you know, basically walked away with all that money. They're like, thank you very much, sir. And of course, snap that piece of garbage stock is down 26% on another earnings. I really call a stock piece of garbage. Uh, the reason why I call this stock that is because it's just a hot mess. I mean, at this point in time, I mean, year to date, you know, what is this thing down right now? 76%. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a rough one, but I mean, you still got a chance, I guess, but what happens if you own any of these stocks, they just drug meta Facebook down four and a half percent. Anything has to do with ad revenue, subscribers, Pinterest down almost 8%. Uh, Google down about 3%, which is big for that stock in after hours, but all of that, but all of that is just a side effect of obviously what's going on with Snap. And I don't know how many earnings now that stock has been down, but I saw this today and I mean, this right here tells like it is. This is the daily declines in the SP 500 approaching historic highs. We're at 27% trading day in 2022 with declines of 1% or more. The only ones just right above this is 08 and 02. And if you look at the day, while you know this is true, I can take you just through this week. Look, look at the day right here. Okay, we start the day off, boom, we drop, and then it goes, nope, we're rocking it up. Let's go, baby. And then it rockets up, 1.5% on the SPY, the NASDAQ was up over 2, and then just at 10.50 said, well, we'll see, or 10.20, excuse me, says, see you later, drops off 2.11%. I think the NASDAQ is over 2.5%. And then just kind of trade sideways from there, as you can see, a little pop at the end, which we tend to usually get, it seems. But if we just scroll back to yesterday and look at it, you know, you can see very similar. The charts almost kind of look identical in a way. But, you know, we, we open the day up and it's like, okay, here we go. We're going to pop up. Boom, 1025. See you later. Down we go. Over percent right there. And then, boom, percent move back up. Go to Tuesday. Huge gap up in the morning. I mean, that was one, one and a half percent gap at least. And then it just crashes and burns over percent, and then it moves a percent up. Look at mo Monday. Well, we closed Monday, and I just say that jokingly because look at that. That's the mark gapped up, and then just traded sideways, right? But you got the one percent gap up. I'm just being truthful. <laughs> I'm just talking. And please hit that like, subscribe button, and share the video if you get anything out of this, guys. I really appreciate it. So you can see just from this week alone how many one percent move ups we've had, how many one percent declines we've had. I mean, it's just uh like i said hey i speak the truth i say volatility is the only thing for a sure thing right and i believe the vix did close below 30 for the first time in a while today which you know the spies down the vix is down the nasdaq's down today that's always fun to see but you know the real reason you're seeing this is one the dollar i told members beginning this week watch the dollar send them out a chart and everything so here it is and this is this new line it's following now where it's just bouncing off and bouncing off so it's just not coming down right now. It's trading sideways, holding its strength. But then there's the yields. Good lord! I mean, look at these yields. This is the two-year yields at four and a half, and you know, look at ten-year setting at four point two. So of course you have to sit there and ask yourself, you now who's buying a ten-year? Why would you not just buy the two-year? Right? If you can get four and a half for it, makes sense, right? I mean. But also look at all the yields from three months on down. All of them are over four now, right? All of them are over four, continue to drive higher. And that's why you see what? Bank of Japan, here we go. Another central bank pivoting. They're going to start buying back bonds. I think it's like in American dollars, about $700 million in bonds to fight the yields over there. And so, because as prices are dropping bonds, yields go up. And so they're going to start buying the bonds, trying to push the, the bond prices up and push those yields down right and of course what do you have going over in the uk they already had them buying bonds to save the pension but you also have 
Their prime minister st stepped down. Didn't she just come in there yesterday and get swore in or something? I'm just kidding. It was six weeks. She lasted six weeks. I think they're comparing her to a head of letters or something over there. I mean, it's a joke, right? And I just said yesterday, I think they're in the same situation we're in, or a worse situation where they got these people over there in charge of the government and their central bank and everything else that don't know what the hell they're doing, right? And they're just throwing everything at the wall and then taking it off the wall and throwing it back at the wall. And now you got <laughs> got to find a new prime minister, even though the markets loved it. So I guess they're like, get this person out of there. Six weeks. Wow. I mean, that is, that's embarrassing actually, but. You know, it is what it is. I mean, hey, let me know if you're happy over there. You finally get that person out, even though it's only been six weeks. And I'll tell you a big thing, man. I don't care. Take a snapshot. Find this thing if you need to. I posted this in the Discord for members and stuff and told them to memorize this thing. And, and this, and I'll harp on all day long, is the economic or business cycle and the stock market cycle, right? Hand in hand. You can go to anywhere like Fidelity, where I have some accounts at. They actually do this for you. Um, I know uh, TD Ameritrade does it as well. I don't know about the other ones. And you can look on this, and it's pretty cool. This one's interactive. So you can literally look at this to see where we're at. And so you'll know, because on that chart, if you scroll back and just pause, it actually tells you what where, where big money's going and what they're being putting their money into. But it says America, for example, you can click on all of these, but the United States is in the late stage, right? And if you look at this right here, tell me if this is not true. Growth moderating, check. Credit tightening, check. Earnings under pressure, check. Policy contradiction, check. Inventories grow, check. Sales growth falls, check. We have reached all of those. And if you just come over and start clicking on like, here's the United States, and it tells you where they were in Q1, Q2, and where we're at right now. And yes, that would describe what we're going through, right? You can go to Canada. China's way over there in, in late, or actually, I'm sorry, they're over there in recession, excuse me. And so you can click on it to see what that is. And, you know, if you want to still, I put it in Discord, I put it on Patreon, just sign up for the link down below. It's less than a McDonald's combo, guys. I put plenty of stuff in there for you. It's all about teaching people to fish, not uh, giving you the fish. And I'm going to do a deep dive video on that one. That's probably going to take me a few weeks to go into that and actually kind of really show you guys. I'm a visual person. I want to see it. And so not just on that chart right there, but it's pretty cool to see that. And like I was telling the members in the Discord, I said, like, you just look where it said buy oil. Like this is where people go into oil and that's where people went into oil. This is when people go into utilities. And it's about big money. It's not about our money. We're chump change. Okay. We ain't driving no markets. You need to know where the big money's going and then grab on the coattails and ride them up. That, that's just what, how it works, right? I mean, we all know the manipulation and everything else that goes on in the market. And so with that right there, if you can figure out where big money's going, even if you're there a little late, at least you're there and just start riding it up. You know, we have seen that this year. We saw it with oil from 2021 into 2022. We saw it with utilities there for a while. And so, you know, we've seen it with many different things, actually. And so, you know, each one of them is going to be different. Each of those cycles takes different times, right? And we've obviously been on a bull run for years. And so, you know, it's it's a different time frame. But again, if you just try to figure it out and look look on your the whoever you if you're with Vanguard, if if whatever you're with BlackRock, whoever you're with, you know, look on there and see if they do stuff like that for you, so you can track it. And they always update it on Fidelity. Uh, but I, you know, going into you know this one right here, can this? I don't know, man. I don't know if it can get much higher. It says U.S. recession probability model. Just thought found this today. And I mean, look at this thing. August 2022 is 98%. It only goes to 100, guys. And if you look there, you can see whenever it gets to, well, either 98 or 100, we're in a recession very soon after that. Uh, I don't know how many months that is. It's probably three to six, maybe a year later sometimes. But, you know, and then the other one is obviously real estate's always affected first, right? And I'll keep you updated on real estate because that's the one you got to follow. These are mortgage applications, and we're all the way back to 1995 levels, I believe it is. Actually, I think that's, yeah, 95 or 97. And so that's not a good thing, obviously. And then, you know, lastly, I found this right here. This is pretty interesting and, you know, good at the same time in a way, I guess, and somewhat not good, but this is inflation. And you see up there, this is inflation from... Um, the little orange or whatever color that is is uh, April 2017 and projected out to 2027. And then the line above it is what happened in the 70s going into the 80s. And you can see the line above how many years it took to get CPI down, right? I mean, it, from, what is that? One, two, three, four, about four years it took to actually get it down to 2%. 
And if you look at it, right now we're on a pretty same kind of trajectory, right? And so obviously we're not as high as they were in the 70s. So for us, if you really look at that and it follows the same mold, it should be about maybe a year and a half, really, because we're at 8.2 and they were almost at 16, double what we're at. So maybe a year, year and a half, something like that, probably be the trajectory. What do you think? Let me know in the comments uh, down there. And of course, as we know, headline CPI doesn't matter the Fed. It's core CPI, which continues to actually increase month over month. That's got a lot to do with the rents. And it's really got a lot to do with the fact that they use old data. I've seen so many people come out there in the real estate business and, you know, rents have been dropping in different areas, but they're using very old data showing us actually they're still increasing. And I guess in some areas there are, in some areas they're not. I've read that, yes, it increased last month by like 0.5% or something. Um, but then other people are saying, well, actually they're decreasing. And so it's like, okay, whatever. I already had that debate, you know, saying, why don't they just find these companies that that's what they do for a living. They can track it and give them accurate data, but they, they're choosing not to for whatever reason. So, uh, you know, and don't forget tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, it's third Friday of the month. So it should be monthly options expiring. Right. And so it'll be a whole lot of manipulation by market makers, making sure they kill the premiums. All right, they don't want to pay out no money. That's just the way it is. And so we'll see what happens on that. But, you know, I showed you Tuesday through the day. I mean, the swings are just crazy. Absolutely crazy. And, you know, in a way it's fun to watch it, but I know it can be frustrating if you're trying to trade or you're looking when to get in and all that other stuff, you know. Um, and again, you know, that's where we're at. Let me know in the comments what kind of day you had, where you think the market's going tomorrow. Anyway. Uh, you know, if you got anything out of it, hit the like and subscribe button. If you want to shine for the membership, give it a shot down the bottom, less than a McDonald's combo, and I will see you guys tomorrow.